come to say it, my sister, hail, hail, hail. Many come saying peace and unity, but they'll bring no peace. This is Love 101 FM, the family station. It's just about 12.15 rather on the family station. And we do apologize for the challenges we were experiencing earlier. We will be join, joining the pastor and he's ready to give you a word. And this is coming from St. Anne. It is or I Love Summer Divine Service. This is Love 101 FM, the family station. Join us on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. My sisters and brothers, friends, God's people, good morning. It's good to see you. God continues to be good to us. I want to extend hearty greetings to all those who are joining us live on Facebook, all those who are hearing us across the nation, across the entire world, because now we are not local anymore. People can hear us all over the world. Praise God for giving the gospel of voice through Love 101. I love the fact that Discovery Bay has become part of the I Love Summer Tour. I love that you are here with us this morning. And I could keep talking about I Love. <laughs> yes, indeed. It is good to be in God's house with God's people. It is a space of love and joy, a space of peace. It is a space where God's people can be together in freedom and we can collectively receive the blessings of God. As we continue in this act of worship, may I invite us to hear God speaking to us today, even as we reflect on the scripture as read from Ephesians 5, 15 to 20. Let's ask God's blessing on the word. Lord, we turn to you needing to hear your voice. Your voice is proven to be one that relieves our troubled minds. Lord, we need to hear from you because if you don't speak, then we are uncertain where to go. So in this moment, we turn our ears to you. We give our hearts over to you. Our lives now are centered on you. We pray you may speak to us. Would you speak through us? Would you speak about us? Lord, would you speak in spite of us? May the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Be careful then how you live. Be careful then how you live. How have you been living? I know things of changed for the entire world and we have had to adjust our lives and our plans but how have you been living these verses in ephesians continue instructions regarding christian life this life is the result of the reconciliation that god has brought in christ it focused it, its focus is on this living in love for the building up of the body of Christ. A review of the word live provides a helpful reminder of some important themes of the book of Ephesians. The recipients are those who once lived in sin, according to Ephesians 2, verses 1 and 2, but must no longer live as Gentiles. Ephesians 4, 17, because God created good works for their way of life. They are urged to live in a way that is worthy of their calling. Ephesians 4, 1, reflecting the love of Christ. Ephesians 5, 2, and their adoption as children of light. Ephesians 5, 8. So that outlines how they ought to be living as people of God. The rest of the passage focuses on three comparable sets of instructions. Firstly, do not be unwise, but wise. 
not foolish, but understanding, not drunk, but filled with the Spirit. Firstly, readers are to be wise people rather than unwise. This use of the term wise differs from much of Paul's other writings about wisdom, where Paul often seeks to distance himself from claim to wisdom, as referred to in Romans 1, 22 and 1 Corinthians 1, 19 through 20. Yet, there are other exhortations in Scripture to be wise, including Romans 16, 19, where Paul counsels the Romans to be wise in what is good and guileless in what is evil. James also defines the wise as those who show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. While James has a different overall message, the instructions about life within the community of faith are similar. The attention to speech are not all that different from those of Ephesians. Both writers invite the newfound people of God to reflect the wisdom in the community's life and its behavior. The wisdom that the author has in mind seems similar to general logical understanding in which being wise was a prime virtue. Such wisdom involved abstract ideas, but also had a practical edge and was acted out in one's daily life's experience. Yet, in Ephesians, the wisdom also has a particular Christian content. The one clarification provided is that one who is wise makes the most of the time because the days are evil. So it is wise to recognize the, the time and seasons we are living in and to make the, the most of it. Because the time is, is evil. Friends, we are living in the in-between time. The time between Christ's inauguration of the reign of God and its completion is on the last day. The language of Ephesians reflects this understanding. That yes, we are those who are marked with a seal for the day of redemption. The situation of Ephesians seems relevant to that of modern Christians. For Ephesians contains no sense of urgency about the coming day of the Lord. We don't seem to be thinking that the Lord is coming anytime soon. No. That's why we live in how we live in. We do what we want to do when we want to do how we want to do, regardless of how it differs from God's expectation of us. Nevertheless, Understanding where one stands in time informs Christian behavior and is part of what it means to be wise. Know where you are standing in time. Because otherwise you may end up making some decisions that you regret. So there were some wise virgins and some there were foolish virgins. The foolish ones never knew where they were in time. They were there thinking they had all the time in the world to go and get additional oil. That was a very unwise price. They never took stock of the time. You need to take stock of time. Not only time in general, but the time and season of your own life. How have you been living? Not only are the readers invited to be wise, readers should not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Here again, the order not to be foolish is very straightforward. It has none of Paul's sense of irony that God has made foolish the wisdom of the world, 1 Corinthians 1.20. 
or of Paul acting like a fool to make a point in 2 Corinthians 11, 21 and 12, 11. Nevertheless, the point of pursuing God's will is familiar with other New Testament writings. The author of Ephesians has already given voice to this understanding of God's will. It is a mystery. We don't always understand everything about God's will. But God has made it known as he continues to reveal his self to us. A good deal of mystery is described in God's reconciliation of Jews and Gentiles through the cross of Christ. The writer undoubtedly has this reconciliation in view when he writes that God's will has destined believers for adoption and for an inheritance. Friends, we need to understand the will of the Lord that it relates directly to our understanding of this message of Ephesians. That yes, the times and seasons, they will change. But we need to understand them. Understand what God's will for us is at a particular time. God's will is that reconciling Gentiles and Jews has made possible their present status as the children of God. Yes. It is also interesting to note that the acts of destining people making known God's will are done according to God's pleasure. Yes. So it is as God, God pleases, he reveals his will. Yeah. So sometimes you won't know it right away, but you keep on with God. You'll discover it along the way. So, not only must you not be foolish and understand the will of God, you must also not get drunk, but be filled with the Spirit. My Lord, how you living? <laughs> how have you been living? <laughs> The season has been a stressful one. And the truth is people have, have sought ways and means to, to medicate themselves. <laughs> you never know that people drink to medicate. Yeah. Trying to calm their spirit. Trying to relax. Trying to sleep. But we are invited don't get drunk. Be filled with something else. The spirit of God. Drunkenness is a depravity that is challenged in the world. We must not live like that. No excesses in, in this kind of behavior must be tolerated among the Christian community. Text describes as debauchery. Where you engage in excess drinking, sex, and partying. We must remain sober. Prodigal son was not sober. Took his father's blessing, squandered it in riotous living. That kind of behavior is inconsistent with the transformed life that Ephesians describes. The alternative to that is to be filled with the Spirit of God. Just being filled with, with wine carries over and leads to a very unholy life. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it has abundant effects that are so different from that of being drunk with wine. A life of the Spirit results in singing and thanksgiving. Oh, yes. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Life in the spirit. So is it that? Things not rough? Where we are living? Yes. But we are filled with the spirit that continues to challenge the narrative of modern times. Though it says to us all oh, things are rough and tough, we continue to sing, My Jesus and I, 
We have a good king. Oh, yeah. We sing choruses that continue to challenge what is happening all around us. Though there is suffering all around, we continue to sing, I will not suffer. I will not beg for. Because these songs are not only unto God, we are encouraged them to sing them to each other as well. Because whilst they glorify God, they encourage another. It also challenges them to a better life as well. How have you been living? So, if we are, in fact, living a life in the Spirit, then we have the means to, to give thanks at all times for everything. How is that possible? <laughs> Giving thanks at all times for everything. Why? Because the, the Spirit continues to do good to us in spite of what is happening around us or about us. Yeah. It is the Spirit in us that gives us life. Our life is not derived from the things without and about. It is God's gift that assures us of life. And so even if the world around us is falling to pieces. We can still give thanks. Uh, Paul assures us that and now we know that all things work together for good. To them who love the Lord and are called according to his. The next time your car tire punch a door mother cuss. <laughs> you just praise God. <laughs> and thank him. <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> you pause and give God Thanks. We, we sometimes only see the, the, the possible damage to our tire, but we don't see what God has saved us from. God's Spirit is always at work doing some things we are not even aware of. So spend some time in the Spirit giving thanks to God. Live a life of gratitude as people who have the Spirit of God. So my friends, I want to encourage you today to not be unwise, but to be wise as people of God. To not be foolish, but to live as people with understanding of God's will. I want to challenge you. To not live a life of drunkenness, but to live a life filled with the Spirit of God. God bless you. God prosper you. How are you? Amen. Friends, despite all the challenges we have been facing, God has been good to us. And it is important that we return our oh, expressions of gratitude to God. But we are also mindful of the people who have had and continue to have severe challenges. And we bring them in prayer to the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, your goodness never ceases. Though at times we are challenged by what we face, and we may even want to think you are not doing anything, we know you are an ever-present help in times of trouble. And so we, we pause to give you thanks for your presence in our lives, in our world, in our communities, in our day-to-day -day experiences. We give you thanks for your constant love. That even when others are spewing hate, we can experience comfort and shelter in your loving faithfulness. Thank you that when others have left and have gone their way, you remain with us, a constant companion on life's journey. We are grateful to you, not only for your presence, but for all the people you have brought into our lives. We give you thanks for the love of family, for the 
companionship that is found in brothers and sisters. We give you thanks for your church, which continues to offer a place of welcome to the outcast. It offers friendship to the lonely. Thank you for your church that offers a space of hope for those who are in despair. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for your ministering servants at Love 101. Thank you for so equipping them to share the good gospel message to men, women, boys, and girls all across this world. Thank you for their reach into spaces even where the church may not be able to extend itself at a time like this. Thank you for all those who have been supporting the work and ministry of Love 101, for all their sponsors, for all their presenters, all their administrators, everyone who is involved in that ministry, we thank you for them. Lord, we are grateful for all your people who have committed themselves to serving you. We are mindful of those for whom these months and weeks have proven to be far more challenging than they have ever had challenges in their life. May they know that you are near. May they hear your still small voice. May they choose your spirit over other spirits. May they choose your wisdom over the foolishness of this world. Oh Lord, may they walk within your will and so discover your purpose for their lives. We pray continually for those who are leaders in government all across this world that you may grant them wisdom beyond their years of learning and serving. May they draw upon godly wisdom as they lead in these most difficult times. Lord, remember we pray those who are most vulnerable, those who are without home and shelter, those who are unemployed, those who are unemployable, remember we pray. Those who are in situations of abuse and have no escape route, may you open a path for them, Lord, to find relief and release. Gracious and loving Lord, Hear our prayers for the sick, the diseased. Hear our prayers for those who are lost and alone. Hear our prayers for those who are desperate this morning. And our suicidal thoughts. Heal them of those thoughts and lead them back to life. This we ask of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give some praise to God in this house. Somebody give God some glory in this house. Amen. God continues to remain true to God's promises, and we ought to respond to all that God continues to do. What a wonderful day it has been so far, having shared this time and space with all of you here in the sanctuary and all across Jamaica and the entire world. We are truly grateful um, for this platform presented to us by Love 101. On this year, I love summer tour. I love that we are here together. But we have to close. <laughs> we have to close at this time. And so may I invite you to join me as we give some praise and thanks to God through the closing song. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Many are the blessings that you give unto me. Blessings are growing like a mighty sea. Lord, I want to thank you for 
Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Any other blessing that you give unto me, blessings are flowing like a mighty sea. Lord, I want to thank you for your love to me. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us share in the sending and benediction. Go forth into the world giving thanks to God in your hearts. We will take the wisdom of God and follow God's will. Be in this world a sign of Christ's presence. We will share compassion with all whom we encounter. Live wisely in God's name. We will give thanks to God in all things. And may the grace, mercy, and wisdom of God be your support, guidance, and strength from this day forward and forevermore.